When the Lord Jesus came, the grace of God became visible to everybody. He suffered, died, and rose. He ascended into heaven. He shall soon come again. Because God is glorious. There is nothing that can even come in comparison to the greatness of who He is. Creator doesn't have to be a stranger to you and me. You can call him Abba Father. I will never again be the same. In Jesus' name, Amen. Don't struggle about your reputation, what others will think, what they will say, oh, what are they doing behind my back? My brother, you just move forward in the blessing of God. You forget worrying about what others think. If you have not been able to believe God for good times, for good things, you've not been able to believe in the gospel of Jesus. God has called you to be blessed. That's the fact. And why does God want you and me to be blessed? God wants us to be a blessing so that His blessings can flow through us to people around us, whether we like them or not. God just likes you. Have you seen some husbands when they come home, they just bring a flower, they just bring a gift for the wife, the children, or their parents. Why did you bring it? Just like that. Just like, out of love. Favor is something that makes you have more than what you deserve more than what you need. You know, God just blesses you and say, God, I didn't deserve this. God says, yeah, I know, but I just like you. When God loves you, you will have more blessings than what you can contain in your house. God is calling you into Christ Jesus for the good things He has planned for your life. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. Amen. Our God is worthy of our praises. This morning we have gathered here to give him the praise that he deserves. And as we wait on him, we are so assured because the Bible says wherever two or three are gathered in his name, he's there. So he's there to meet with us. We can trust him this morning. We can trust his heart and his intentions for us. So as we seek him, let's our desire be that God, you arise and take your place. And as we praise him, and as we lift his name, he will come and fill this place. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this beautiful morning. We know that you are here. 
And we've come here with a heart of thanksgiving, with a heart full of gratitude. Because there is nobody else on this earth that deserves our worship and our praise. We are assured of this in our heart. And this morning, we give our thanksgiving and our praise and our worship to you alone. Come and take your rightful place, O God. As your children cry out to you, as your children praise you, as your children worship you with all they have, we pray that you would come and take your rightful place. Come and dwell amid us, O God. This morning, we seek your face. And we pray that as we lift our praises up, let your name be lifted high, O oh God. Thank you that you are here in this place. Let your name be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Arise. Arise. Arise, 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 take your place, be in front on our prayer. Come on, Jesus, put that next to Arise, 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 take your place, be 
I call you faithful, for I just wanna thank you, Lord, for every mountain, for every time you brought me through. And I call you faithful, but I just wanna thank you, Lord, for your forgiveness, for how you never turned away. I call you faithful. Oh, I just want to thank you, Lord, for your salvation. You pay the price I couldn't pay. I call you faithful. Oh, I just want to thank you, Lord, say, for every morning, for every open door. I call you faithful. Oh, I just want to thank you, Lord, for every mountain, for every time you brought me through. I call you faithful, and I just want to thank you, Lord, you forgive me, for your forgiveness. You paid the price I couldn't pay. I call you faithful. Oh, I just want to thank you, Lord, for your salvation. For your salvation. Oh, you paid the you price. You paid the price I couldn't pay. And I call you faithful. Oh, I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you. 
worthy to be praised. He's been good to us in times that we didn't deserve, in times when there was no way He's been good to us. We just want to thank you, Father, for you. just no words to thank you enough. No matter what we try to say or express, it's never enough to worship you. And Father, we pray this morning as our hearts are crying out more than the songs and the music and the glamour. Let it fall for who you are and worship you, O God.
strengthening us when we were weak. Thank you, O God, for the times that we had nobody to stand by and you were there. Thank you for the times when everybody was there. Still we were alone and you were with us. Thank you for not leaving us when we had all hopes gone. You were our hope, O God. And we stand on your promises this morning, trusting you that the days ahead will be with you. That no matter what we face, we know that we can go through it, O God. We trust your name and trust your holy name. We praise you this morning for who you are. Thank you for blessing us with your presence this morning. You are worthy of our praise. We give you all the glory and all the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Shall we put our hands together? Well, thank you, Pastor. You all uh, know this song, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving, I will enter his courts with praise. We will sing that after the confession. That's the Sunday school song, I grew up learning that song. <laughs> Let's do the confessions together. I believe in the almighty God, our father and creator. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, God and my savior. He was conceived of the Holy Spirit and born of a virgin. He suffered, died and rose again. He ascended into heaven. He shall soon come again. I believe in God the Holy Spirit who is worshipped and my guide. I believe in holy fellowship, faithful giving and service to God in this church. I believe the Holy Bible is the perfect word of God. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. And I can do what it says I can do. Today as I learn the word of God, 
I am blessed, healed and anointed for a holy and victorious living. I will never again be the same in Jesus name. Amen. How many of you know that song? I will enter his gates. Super, let's sing. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. Let's sing it again. I will. I will enter. I will enter his courts with praise. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. Oh, he has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice. Let's do it one more time. I will enter. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. Oh yes. Thank you Lord. I will say this is the day. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Amen. Please be seated. John chapter 2 has an amazing story of a supernatural that the Lord Jesus Christ did. An amazing supernatural story where the Lord Jesus played with the very molecules of nature and dealt with the atomic nature of elements. He not only changes people, he changes materials and substance. When the Lord Jesus Christ looked at water, and the creation saw the creator and blushed. So red it turned wine. John chapter 2 verse 11, shall we read together? And the Bible says, this beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory and his disciples even though Jesus did these miracles, only disciples believed on him because evidence doesn't lead to conviction, only attitude leads to conviction. You can show a person all the evidences of God at work, but it's their attitude that leads them to choices whether they want to believe in God or they don't want to believe in God. You can write on that cigarette packet that this is injurious to health. But attitude will choose whether they will still want to smoke it or no. You can write on the Bible that this gives eternal life. But attitude will choose whether they will follow it or no. Attitude makes the difference, not the evidence. For those who want to follow God, evidence helps them. Because they have made up their mind to follow God. But for those who don't want to follow God, evidence is only used for their judgment because they rejected God. The story is, I have a feeling I've preached this story in the church so many times. But I checked it up in my Sunday preaching history and figured out that probably this is the first time I'm preaching this uh, passage of the Bible. But I have a feeling I've preached it so often because almost every marriage, and that keeps happening. So we keep referring to the wedding of Cana, you know, and, and therefore there is this feeling that we preached it in this church so often, but I guess on a Sunday, not really. Story is, there was a wedding in Cana. There was a wedding because wedding is blessed. It was not two people living together without marriage. It was a wedding between a man and a woman as God meant for it. Those of you who didn't say Amen to that, when are you likely to say Amen today? <laughs> Jesus Christ, our Lord, was invited to that wedding. Jesus Christ, our Lord, Blessed Mother Mary, was also invited to the wedding. That means there was some family connection. They did not invite Jesus to the wedding because he is Guru, because he is God. No. They invited Jesus to the wedding because he was a part of the family. They didn't invite Jesus to the wedding because they needed a miracle. No, not at all. Because Jesus had never done miracles till then. 
This is the first miracle Jesus did is what you read in the Bible. So they never knew he was going to do a miracle. They never knew he will do a miracle. They never knew he can do a miracle. They've heard stories about he was born to Virgin Mary before uh, she married Joseph and could have other children. I mean, they heard those stories, but not necessarily believed it. Yes, he had started choosing disciples. He already had disciples. In chapter 1 of John, a few verses ago, you will find how Jesus Christ spoke to Nathaniel, a Jewish rabbi, and prophesied to him and revealed his past. And Nathaniel, the Jewish rabbi, looked at Jesus and said, you are surely the son of God. So the Lord Jesus Christ had already started ministry, but he did not do miracles till then. He did not reveal supernatural. This is the first supernatural miracle he did. The first miracle he did. So he was invited to the wedding. For, our, for weddings, don't we invite people that we love? Okay, now if this is the speed of your reply. It's, this, today's message is going to take a long time. Jesus Christ, our Lord, was invited to the wedding because the couple wanted Mary and that family to be there. Now, couple's name is not mentioned for whatever reason. But couple invited the family of the Lord Jesus. Now, Mother Mary was there before the Lord Jesus could arrive with the disciples. They not only invited Jesus, they also invited the disciples. Some people have relationship only with Jesus, with no other disciples. Now that's not a great idea. When you connect with the Lord Jesus, learn to love his other children also. Amen. Some of you are so connected to Jesus, but so away from other Christians. That, that probably gives you a feeling of safety, but it's not a doctrine of the scripture. You, you and I must learn to work along with others. Trust Jesus, love Jesus. Don't have to trust others, just love them. Now the Bible says, Jesus Christ, our Lord, while he was there, and the wedding, probably the party was going on, the prayer part was over, now the party was going on, and uh, Jewish culture, especially Jewish rabbis, they never touch alcohol, because alcohol is against the Nazarene vow. Nazarene vow is a high vow, is a high lifestyle discipline of chosen people. They never touch alcohol. So Jesus Christ also was in many ways of that Nazarene vow. And uh, so they probably, uh, in the Jewish culture, they probably avoid alcohol. And so at one point, grape juice, which is very common in Israel, which is a very uh, common culture, like here you give tang and orange juice and you know, uh, uh, stuff like that, some tail they give, no? Cocktail, mocktail, whatever. So, uh, so <laughs> without alcohol. So, they were serving all that. Suddenly, they ran out of grape juice, or called wine. They ran out of wine. Lord Jesus' mother comes and tells Jesus, they ran out of wine. Now, the Bible also says they wanted wine. They ran out of wine, they wanted wine. Who wanted wine? The governor of the feast wanted more wine. Because somehow people liked that wine and they were like, hey, get some more juice here. And so they ran out of it. Sometimes people will cause trouble in marriage. <laughs> Not the two people, the two couples, that pair is happy on the stage, but people who come to the marriage, will drink things, speak things, do things, show things that will spoil their marriage. Every married couple don't allow a third person between you. Why unmarried people are clapping? You wait, your time will come. <laughs> married people don't allow a third person to come into your marriage. These people, they finished off the joy of marriage. Now it's an embarrassment for the couple. Governor of the feast says, no wine. Mary, the mother of our Lord, runs to Jesus and says, runs or walks or whatever, and says, they ran out of wine. Reporting. Mother's report. Mother's report things to children. They report things to parent, the, you know, other spouse. 
they report things to sisters, they report things to their own parents. It's a part of motherhood. They report things. It's a good thing. They reported. She reported to Jesus. They ran out of wine. But the way Jesus responded was very interesting. Now, I like the way Mother Mary reported to Jesus. Why? She told Jesus, because somewhere she knew this fellow is special. The angel came and told me this fellow is going to be born. So probably there is something he can do. Even though this is the first miracle Jesus did and Mary had no clue he could do a miracle. Yet she knew it is better to tell him. May, may I tell you all one thing. Even if Jesus Christ is there in your life. Unless you activate his presence. Nothing will change for good. Even if the Lord Jesus is there in your life. Human behavior and error can cause trouble. Jesus is with me. So I'll break traffic rules and drive careless. Don't blame Jesus for what can go wrong. Jesus is with me. So I'll speak careless and I'll be, uh, you know, insensitive and I'll be abusive. Don't expect your marriage to go anywhere, even if the Lord is with you. Human behavior and human error can cause trouble even if Jesus is there in your life. Am I helping anybody here? Jesus is there. So I don't care. I won't go to work. I don't care how I handle my money. I don't care. I won't make documents before I give money. Hey, listen. You cannot cancel out wisdom and discipline in the name of Christ being there. Christ being there should actually make you honor and respect his presence and do things more dignified and decent. This is very important. Hallelujah. Never. This is one joke. The former American president cracked. I liked it. It is, I think it was told by President Ronald Reagan. It seems once in Russia, there was a, it's a joke. It seems once in American president said. Uh, it seems once in Russia, Gorbachev made a rule that some of these officers are driving reckless in Moscow. They're driving too fast. And when the police, traffic police stops them saying you're over speeding, they say, do you know who I am? I'm the Communist Party's president. I'm the secretary. I'm the secretary's mother-in-law, whatever. And police can't do anything. So Gorbachev passed a law. Traffic police is given special power that hereafter, no matter who drives faster, and over speeding, you can give them a ticket and arrest them if required. It was national news. People celebrated the fact that even higher ups will be treated like normal. So everyone liked it. So traffic police was very excited with the kind of power they have now to maintain discipline on the road. But what happened? Gorbachev became late for one meeting after passing the rule. So President Gorbachev told his driver, today I will drive, you sit behind. And Gorbachev took the car and he went very fast because he didn't want to be late for the very important communist meeting. Traffic police saw the overspeeding vehicle and took the patrol bike and followed the car. But didn't catch, didn't stop, didn't give a ticket, came back. The fellow cops of the traffic police said, what happened? I mean, why didn't you catch the guy? Said somebody very important. Who could it be? Was it Gorbachev? Said no. Said, I don't know who was sitting at the back, but Gorbachev was driving. <laughs> it is true in the world that if somebody special is there, everything changes. But that's not true about Jesus. His presence is with you. But he will work based on your faith. When you read the scripture, your faith activates his presence. He is with you all the time. He is with you always. But whether he will function or no is in response to your faith. Pastor, I'm a child of God. Then why this is happening to me? Listen, are you operating in the discipline of what is required? 
Are you operating in the faith that requires Christ to work? And the Bible says Mary somewhere had this faith that Christ can make a difference. I believe that Sunday after Sunday, God's children who come to worship him, they know somewhere in their heart, he is with me. All I need is for him to work. And guess what? Oh, go ahead. Give the Lord a big hand. Absolutely. Absolutely. Amen. Jesus Christ, our Lord, <laughs> he, he turned around and he told Mother Mary something that is unbelievable. I keep saying Mother Mary because there are so many Marys in the Bible. Mary Magdalene, then the Bible itself says the other Mary. So, Mother Mary, Mother of our Lord, said to Jesus, they have no wine. And Jesus said to her something unusual. All of you don't go home and try these stunts. These are done by professionals. <laughs> and consequences are your responsibility. Mother Mary says to Jesus, they have no wine. And Jesus says to Mother Mary, woman. <sighs> Mother Mary was such a blessed woman. That's why Jesus was not crucified that day. <laughs> okay, so that... <laughs> So that is not a word of insult. Now, today it feels very, very awkward. But in their culture, it was common that in customary culture, in moments of uh, formal settings, that even children would speak differently with parents. It was, it was common. So the Lord Jesus calling her woman was not abnormal. But the Lord was also saying something very important here. Look, you are my mother, that's at home. But when it comes to divine things, when it comes to divine matters of sovereign decisions, you have nothing to do. That's what Jesus said there. Difficult one, but he did it. Sometimes, you know, when we come to the Lord, please remember, handling human pressure and God's timing is very difficult. The human pressure of human timing and pressure of God's timing are two different pressures that sometimes we get sandwiched in between. We all know chicken sandwich, veg sandwich. We are all sandwiched sometimes. Between the two, the urgent that is required right now and God's timing which says, wait, I will work. Between the two, my goodness, we become Pentecostal Jews. We, we become Christian sandwich in between the two. And that's what was happening there. Jesus says to Mary, my time is not come. My time. Let's all say God's time. God's time. Even though they wanted wine now, God says my time is not come. There is a lot of mismatch between God's time and our need. And also can I tell you something? Many people feel that I'm a born Christian. You are never a born Christian. You are a born human you are a born Indian. Christian, you become when you are born again. It takes second birth to become a Christian. You are a born Indian, you are a born human, but you are never a born Christian. You become a child of God only when you are born again. Yes, there is no special privilege. You can't come and tell God, I'm Bishop's son. God will say, Bishops don't have sons, first thing. But second thing, second thing, you cannot claim a privilege with God which is not given by the scripture. You become a child of God only when you're born again. And that is the greatest privilege with Christ our Lord. And Jesus says to her, my time is not yet come. In other words, something is going to happen, but it's going to be on my time. Amen. Hallelujah. God has a time and at God's time, it will happen. Amen. This is not an excuse. This is a reality. Hallelujah. Believers, our time in this nation is coming closer and closer. No government can stop the work of God in the nation of India and around the world. Hallelujah. Amen. I believe a great revival is going to happen than ever before. No powers of hell can stop it. 
No strength of religiosity can stop it. If God has planned it, he will do it. My time has not yet come. I tell you, many of you are waiting on God. His time is soon going to come. And when his time comes, nobody can stop what he has planned and decided to do. In the name of Jesus, I want to tell those who are waiting. <laughs> you are not a sparrow in the making. You are an eagle in the making. All oh, your waiting is going to yield results that are unusual. Hallelujah. I'm waiting for my marriage. I'm waiting for my child. I'm waiting for my breakthrough. I'm waiting for God's favor. I'm waiting for my house. I'm waiting to move forward. I'm waiting for a change in my life. I'm waiting to see a miracle. Let me tell you this this morning. Jesus says, don't worry. My time is going to come. It is going to happen. God's appointed time will supersede the season of human time. Hallelujah! Israel was going through a season of famine. But in God's time, it was the appointed time for divine provision. God's time will supersede human time. Israel was walking through the wilderness where there was no water. But in God's appointed time, it was time for them to drink water. Rock began to pour out water. Clouds pour out water. We understand. But God said, baby, not clouds. This time let rocks pour out water. It rained from the side out of a rock. Usually it rains from the top, from the clouds. When God's timing comes, it will supersede human conditions. It was God's time for Abraham to have a child. But it was human time of barrenness. 90 year old woman could not have a child because that is human season. When God's timing and human seasons come together, God's timing will overrule. It will supersede. It will take over. Hallelujah. Lazarus was in the grave and it was time for his body to be corrupt and decayed. But when Jesus came there, it was appointed time for a resurrection. God's time will supersede over human seasons. Pastor, this is a season. Market is bad. I have no hope. Excuse me. Your hope should not be built on the barrenness of the season. Your hope should be built on the time of God's plan. Yes, brother. Sense the plan of God. Discern the plan of God. Wait for the plan of God. Prepare to the plan of God and honor the plan of God. This is what? Mary, the mother of our Lord, did. She discerned he is going to do something. Has he done something before? No. Except once she went missing. But this time she knew he won't go missing from the wedding. She discerned he is going to do a miracle. The proof that you walked with God is not a selfie with some Bible verses. Ah, that came out nice. <laughs> it's not Christian bumper stickers on the rear of your car. That's not the proof of your faith. The proof of your faith is the ability to discern the will of God. She discerned. And how did she react? Come home. Woman. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> that is called Pentecostal faith. We threaten God. God, I'm going to fast. Hunger strike. Till I watch the TV, I won't eat food. Have you seen children do that? Same thing Christians do. Till you give a miracle, I will fast. Fasting is to surrender before God. You should fast. Fasting is important. Fasting is for demon spirits to be cast out. Without fasting and prayer, the spirits won't go. Jesus said that about certain spirits. Fasting and prayer is not to attack God and change God's plan. There are some people who say, till God does a miracle, 
I will not go to church. I'm strike. What? You want to do what they're going to do tomorrow in Bangalore, auto strike. You want to join strike party against God. God is not political. It doesn't work like democracy. It is theocracy. It's different from democracy. <laughs> she discerned. She, she didn't tell Jesus anything. Mothers, listen, learn something. Don't embarrass your son in front of everybody. I know, teenagers are in the kids' church. Otherwise, here I would have had a revival right now. <laughs> don't give one hidden pinch. What you're talking, huh? No, don't do all that. She... <laughs> Some of you are staring and want to even giggle. You got too bad a pinch, is it? <laughs> <laughs> she turned around, learn from Mother Mary, she turned around, honored her son, turned around and says to the servants. That means Mother Mary had servants walking with her. Interesting. Interesting. And says to the servants, whatever he says, do it. All of you who love Mother Mary, today she is telling you one thing. Don't do what others say. Maybe the bishop, the governor, the priest, don't listen to them. Whatever Jesus says, just read it and do it. Just read it and do it. If you really love Mother Mary, obey what she said. Listen to Jesus and obey him. That is what she said. Rest is up to you. <laughs> Send this to all our friends. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Huh. One thing I love about Catholic people, I just love about them, is their devotion. I love about them. Devotion. Their sense of respect for God. I wish the Others, oh, Protestants also had it. Protestants are still protesting, but they don't know what they are protesting. <laughs> Everything they are protesting. They protest their own yesterday and their own tomorrow also. They are on constant protest mode. Please get into devotion mode. It's very important. <clears throat> Mary... The mother of our Lord says to the servants, Obey what Jesus says. Let's say that together. Obey what Jesus Can we say that louder? Obey what Jesus says. That means first you listen to Jesus. Only then you can obey. You can't listen to FM radio and obey Jesus. Oh, see how beautifully the message is going? You can't be watching YouTube videos and follow Jesus. If you want to obey Jesus, first you have to listen to Jesus. Hallelujah. There are a lot of fake agencies saying that they represent Jesus. The authorized version is the Holy Bible. Listen to what Jesus said. I request my Roman Catholic friends, listen to what Mary said. She said, listen to Jesus. Respect Jesus. Servants understood. They stopped following Mary and started following Jesus. Because now, hereafter, no more listening to Mary. We have to listen to Jesus. Wow, what a message. I never thought it would come out like this. <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful. Hallelujah. Amen. <clears throat> the servants are now waiting for Jesus to talk. I don't know what Jesus did. I don't know how long he took. Sometimes we don't know what Jesus is doing and we don't know how long Jesus will take. Even Mary did not know. She also didn't know. After some time, Jesus says to the servants, <laughs> because now they are ready to listen to Jesus. Jesus says to the servants, see there are water pots there. There were six water pots there. Water pots are kept there for people to wash their feet and hands according to the custom of the Jewish people. Jewish people have a custom. When they go for a wedding, they'll wash their hands and feet. So just for the custom, Jesus said, fill those things with water. <laughs> I love it. 
They didn't have a committee meeting saying, should we do what he said? Shall we go back to Mother Mary and check? Nothing. They obeyed. The first thing about a miracle is what Mary did. Activated the presence of Jesus. Jesus being there is not enough. He sleeping in the boat is not enough. He attending the wedding is not enough. Activate his presence. Amen. Second thing, what the servants did. You want to walk in the supernatural? Do the second thing. Just obey what he says. Hallelujah. Jesus said, fill it with water. They can always ask, what is the connection between no wine and filling that with water? Wedding is coming to a close. All the people have already come. Why? Wine is not there is the problem. Why you want to fill that with? They can ask questions. That is why God so loved the world that he sent his son, not a committee. <laughs> he loved the world so much that he didn't send a committee. He didn't send a denomination. He didn't send a religion. He sent himself in the form of his son. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus says, fill it with water. When God tells you something, it may look disconnected, but just obey. In the eternal plan of God, the grand weaver may work elsewhere, but somehow it will be connected to what you are waiting for. And the Bible says, they took water, and you know how much they filled it? To the brim. When they obeyed, they obeyed fully. Hmm. They didn't just pour some water and say, we poured. No, 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 no. These are not teenagers. These are dedicated servants. <laughs> teenagers not by 13, 14, 15. <laughs> I'm talking about teenager attitude of some old Christians. <laughs> when a song starts, they'll sing the first line, then they'll sing the last line. <laughs> you know such people? They'll come after the first song and leave just before the benediction. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Correct, I'm talking to you only. <laughs> this attitude... <laughs> if you go to a doctor and the doctor treats someone who brought you along, You'll get upset. No, doctor, I came, I need treatment. They just came along. Same way when you've come, if I don't talk to you, Because I love you, because I honor your presence, I'm telling you to improve, to change. Jesus, our Lord, says, fill it with water. And they filled it to the brim. Brothers and sisters, when you obey God, do it to the fullest. Go the extra mile. Do the extra bit. Because God also did like that for us. When God does something for us, he goes the extra mile. Give and it shall be given unto you. How? Pressed down, shaken together and overflowing. Hallelujah. You praise God, go the extra mile. You worship God, go the extra mile. You want to serve God, go the extra mile. You are working in your office for God's glory. Do the excellent bit of it, not the average bit of it. Where you're studying, come out as a topper because you want people to look at you and say, a child of God is a topper. Hey, listen, you go the extra mile in everything. You want to clap, give it up to Jesus. Go ahead. Absolutely. Amen. They filled it up to the brim. And then they didn't start complaining. Where is why? No. After you obey, continue to worship. Don't critique. Don't criticize. Don't get upset. Don't get frustrated. The Bible says in the book of Ephesians, after having done all, stand. In other words, after you've done everything, don't backslide. Then... Jesus again says, guys, take some of this. Take this water. So now they have another vessel. They again take this water. Take it to the governor of the feast. And this is where most Christians will be upset. Ane, they want, bhaiya, guruji, they want wine, not water. This is where God needs worshippers, 
not posing as worshippers. Many pose as worshippers. Hallelujah. What are you doing, Lord? No, that is... <laughs> that is... <laughs> oh my goodness. Today's message, I want to hear it again. <laughs> that, is, that is today's 21st century worship. Bible worship is not like that. Bible worship is to obey with confidence that he is right. He has a plan no matter what. No matter what. He is right. He has a plan. Hallelujah. My life is for God's glory. Even if I fail, it's okay. He is still right. Amen. I prayed and didn't get a miracle. No problem. He is right. That attitude is the attitude of worship. They filled it. They took it to the governor. On the way, did they discuss what's going on here? Did Mary know what she thinks of her son? Thought, this is what mothers have too much expectations from their children. They have no expectation from husband, but children. <laughs> this is wrong. All kinds of talk. This. When you obey God, don't murmur in between. These are all very important topics. When carrying the water, don't keep checking. No use the water. The, don't do all these things. You take it with confidence. You trust in God. On the way, don't do mimicry. Amen. Just go in faith. Go in confidence. They took it to the governor. You wanted wine? Wine has come. Governor tasted it. Because that is procedure. He got upset. He says it is our culture to give good grape juice first. And inferior later. Those who are latecomers and all, no? They should get second class. <laughs> this is not just my attitude. It's there from the first miracle Jesus did. But those who come early, they should get the first one. But the mercy of God, when God did a miracle, God was just driving one point. What you pluck from the grape wine and you create juice, never compare it with what I create. I create juice from the normal water, but what I create, hallelujah. From that same old job, from that same old marriage, from that same old weakness, from that same old language crisis, from that same old sicknesses, from that same old relationships, from that same old education. When I create something new, when I make a miracle, oh, when I... This morning the word of the Lord is coming to some of you. Your water is going to turn into wine. Your water, your water is going to... Oh, somebody give the Lord a mighty hand. I tell you, my brother, your water, hallelujah, what you thought is useless, your water, what you thought is limited, your water, what you thought is to be poured on the feet, your water. Is going to be the best part of the whole marriage. Because Jesus touched that which was available. Hallelujah. Only that water was available. You know what you bring to God. Oh, he has a way of using it. Hallelujah. What you give to his control, he has a way of using it. Give it to God. Let it be available to God. Surrender your education to God. Give your job to God. That doesn't mean you give up job and say, God, you work. No, no, no. <laughs> Surrender your job to God means working with a sense that God, hereafter your will be done when I work. Amen. That sense of surrender Lord, I surrender my parents to you. I surrender my children to you. It's a beautiful, 
thing to do. You know, throughout the, I read this portion, I don't know how many times. I wanted to see one thing. Governor said it tasted good. Everybody said, only disciples did not say anything. Disciples did not say anything. The Bible says disciples believed in him. Why? I, I thought a lot about it. <clears throat> I feel one of the, there are many people who say Jesus made wine. I want to drink wine. Drink. <laughs> drink. I will join you. Drink. Today is Sunday. Drink more. More wine. Take water. Turn it into wine and drink. <laughs> I will also join. Don't go to shop and buy. <laughs> Take water. Pray. When it turns into wine, drink. <laughs> it's not turning. Then drink tea, coffee and leave it. <laughs> what was scheduled to be a shame turned into a major honor. You're worried, my God, my life is going to be shame. At that point, God will turn it into an honor. Oh, he will do it. Marriage. Marriage should become a success. If you want marriage to become a success, having Jesus is not enough. Allow Jesus to be the Lord of your life. And Jesus is there somewhere. No, that's not enough. Jesus should be the Lord of your life. Bible on the teapoy or in the cupboard, or under the pillow, is not effective. Bible in your heart is very effective. <laughs> Have the scripture in your life. How to find the right person, pastor? Success of them. You know what? I have a feeling. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. Why did Jesus do the first miracle in a wedding party? I've, I've thought about this. Why didn't Jesus do it in the synagogue? Why didn't Jesus go to Solomon's temple and do the first miracle? Why didn't Jesus gather all the people in Nazareth or Cana of Galilee and, and do one chamatkar? Why did Jesus do miracle in a wedding? On a lighter note, even God knows weddings need miracles. <laughs> but, but apart from that, apart from that, I think Jesus did a miracle, the first miracle in a marriage because more than the church, God values the marriage. Ah, that was a tough one. I'll repeat it. I'll repeat that. More than the building, the church building, more than the concept of religion, God is interested in marriages. Before God built a church, God built a marriage in the Garden of Eden. If marriages fail, everything fails. The devil always attacks marriage. Entertainment industry, what is it? It's all against the marriage. What is this feminist movement? If it was uplifting women, praise God. But it's about breaking marriages. What is all this queer culture, wokeism, what is it? Breaking relationships that are divinely blessed. The devil is against your marriage. God is for your marriage. Amen. Amen. Now what happens? First thing, how to find the right partner. Now those who are married, just close your eyes and thank God for what you already have. Those who are not yet married. <laughs> Where should you find? Right swipe, left swipe. Stop swiping, start praying. <laughs> If any of you who are already married understood what I said, you need to repent. <laughs> First thing, when you're looking for a marriage partner, look for person of same faith. Someone who wants to have Christ and his disciples in the marriage. Someone who doesn't want to have that, not the best choice. Second, look for someone with similar outlook on life. Someone who wants to live with you in your Galilee. whose spending attitudes, saving attitudes, family cultures are sort of going to gel along. Now, if you violate it, it doesn't mean that a curse will come. No, it's, it's, this is just about, just about making a successful choice. 
if you do it differently, can you succeed? Well, chances are you will fail, but again, it can succeed. But why take a risk? Because this is something you don't get to do twice. It's better to get it right in the first shot. Try and look for similar age and a person of better temperament, better attitudes, better expressions. Look for someone like that. Pastor, I'm already married, what to do? I'll tell you. <laughs> Plan to invest into your marriage. Marriage becomes a success when you plan for it. If you don't plan for it, it is difficult. Marriage is not a, it doesn't happen automatically. Uh, marriage doesn't work like software. Yes, you have a flow chart. Switch on, step one. St marriage, nothing like that. Different days, it flows differently. <laughs> so, <laughs> plan and invest time and efforts. I also thought marriage means it will happen very easy. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> My wife also thought like that, but we, by God's grace, we built a beautiful home. You know, today I love my married life more than loving the church. God first, marriage next. Uh, simply because I learned the priority that God has, and that order is better than any other uh, superficial order. Choose words and expressions correctly. Be careful, you know. No matter how upset you are, you know how you talk to a medical doctor, you know how you'll talk to a judge in the court, you know how you'll talk to your advocate. No matter how upset you are, you know how you will talk to uh, the police inspector, you know. You know how you will talk, right? But when it comes to marriage, sometimes there is carelessness, there is dishonor. Uh, why should you expect a blessing of God on that? You can't. So be correct with expressions and choice. But they did like that. That doesn't give you the license to be wrong. You are right not because your partner is right. You are right because you are right in the eyes of God. You know, there is that relationship. So choose your words and expressions correctly. And no matter what happens, honor your spouse and love your spouse. Pastor, I'm in no mood. That is okay. But honor and love. It is not based on when you're in good mood. No, no, no. In whatever mood you are, honor your spouse and love your spouse. I, I, I know that was an incomplete sentence. Cancel that. I have to say it correctly. Honor and love only your spouse. <laughs> and now it is correct. The first one you cancel it. <laughs> honor and love only your spouse, as a spouse. Our God is a God who changes everything. Nehemiah chapter 13 verse 2, God changes curses into blessings. Oh, I love that. I love the way Nehemiah says it. Yet our God turned the curse into a blessing. Pastor, there's a curse in our family. It's full of shame. Hey, it's going to change. Yet our God, there is a Jesus factor. There is a God factor that changes curses into blessings. He turns lack into abundance. That widow was ready to die. Elijah the prophet goes there and God says, bring what is available. In the Cana of Galilee, water was available. In the widow's house, little oil was available. And it began to flow. And it began to increase. And it began to grow. You know what? God turns lack into abundance. What is lacking in your life, God can turn it into abundance in your life. Our God turns attitudes around. Bitterness, he changed into love. I can't forgive. I can't change that addiction. I am not able to come out of this fear. I am not able to transform my character. Hi, our God can change bitterness into love. Talk about that guy called Saul. He was the first terrorist in the Bible. Even the last terrorist in the Bible. He was a terrorist. He went around killing people, pillaging homes and destroying lives. He was a terrible guy. When God touched him, he became a man of love. Our God can transform people. Our God can change people. Close your eyes and say, Father, today I want to thank you because you turn water into wine. 
Thank you that you can turn what is available in my life for your glorious purpose. When the devil comes to attack my morals, when lack and shame make me bitter, help me, Lord, to search for you in my life and to put my faith in you and to obey what you say because you can turn my curse into a blessing. You can turn my lack into abundance. You can turn my bitterness into something that I love and cherish. You are the supernatural. You are able to work on the atomic level, on the molecular level of things. Oh, you can change things in such a way that they will never revert back to what it was before. You are the supernatural God. I thank you this morning. Wherever you are seated, would you take a few minutes to thank the Lord and say, thank you, Lord, for who you are. I'm sorry if I ignored you in my life. I'm sorry if I ignored you in my relationships. But Father, let me find you and honor you in my life. Let me honor you with obedience. And help me, Lord, to be a disciple of yours on seeing the miracle. Let me trust you more. Let me believe you more. Thank you that your glory is in your miracles. Your glory is in the change you bring. Your glory is in such. Heavenly Father, this morning as your servant, I declare your blessing upon your people. I declare your abundance upon your people. I declare your favor upon your people. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray that in each one's life, their water will turn into wine. Hallelujah. Everybody lift your right hands to the Lord and say, Father, I thank you. I thank you. Come on, lift your hand and say, thank you. Thank you for Jesus in my life. Thank you for Christ in my life. Thank you that there is potential to change my lack into abundance. Thank you that you will change my shame into honor. Thank you that you will change the curse into a blessing. I thank you, Father. Help me to wait on you. Discern your timing. Prepare for what you're going to do. I thank you that you will never put your word to shame. I thank you even if I go through times of testing, even if I'm sandwiched between human pressure and your timing, I will honor you, O oh God. I thank you for that grace, Master. Hallelujah. Please put your hands down. Let's pray. Father, thank you this morning is a morning of miracles and healings. Thank you this morning is a place of change, transformation. Hallelujah. Our homes will turn beautiful. Our lives will turn successful. You are able, oh Father, to turn the embarrassing moment into moments of history and change, of honor and grace. Thank you for you have done it. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody shout an amen. Go ahead, give the Lord a big hand, shall we? Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I want to sing a song with you before we close. Shall we stand? There's a beautiful hymn that says, All to Jesus I surrender. That's really why the water became wine. Let's sing together. All to Jesus I surrender all to Him I freely give. I will ever love and trust Him in His presence daily. I surrender to Jesus humbly at his feet I my worldly pleasures all forsaken hold 
me, Jesus, hold me now. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to Thee, my blessed Savior. I Yes, Lord, may the Savior holy night. Let thy feel thy Holy Spirit truly know that thou art mine. I surrender all. I I surrender, Lord, I give myself to Thee. Fill me with Thy love and power, let Thy blessings fall on me. Surrender now, I feel the sacred pain. Oh, the joy of full salvation, glory, glory. Shall we lift our hands, everyone, together? I surrender all, my Jesus. I beautiful beautiful presence this morning here in this place oh god lord thank you for teaching us through your word today and this week even as we activate your presence even as we obey your word thank you lord for the supernatural will lord proceed oh god father lord the natural oh god father lord and we're going to see mighty things happening and mighty changes happening in our lives and in our situations oh god lord you are the miracle working god and we're expecting something beautiful oh god father lord in our lives thank you for your promises are enough for us, O oh God, Lord, and help us to wait on you, trust you. Thank you for, Lord, your presence and your promises to us. As a church, we pray for everyone who has come here for the very first time. Lord, we pray that, Lord, they will, Lord, go back with your supernatural touch upon their life, O oh God, Lord. Thank you, Father, for you will continue to minister unto their lives. We pray for those who are traveling this week, that your journey of mercy shall go with them. We pray, Father, for those who are celebrating their birthdays and their wedding anniversaries this week. God, we pray your favor will be upon their lives, O oh God, Lord. Also, we pray over the tithes and the offerings, O oh God, Lord. Even as your children, O oh Lord, hallelujah, put forth, O oh God, Father, Lord, uh, Lord, their sacrifices, O oh God, Lord, into your kingdom. God, we pray that, Lord, you will bless and multiply every blessing in their lives, Oh God, Lord, send us back with your blessing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of our Heavenly Father, and the sweet and abiding fellowship of the Holy Spirit, may it rest and abide with each one of us now and forevermore. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 
Hey, if you're here for the very first time in this church, as a church, we would like to welcome your church. Put your hands together and welcome them into the house of God. So even as you walk out, there's a guest lounge to my right-hand side. Please visit that place and give us an opportunity to serve you. Thank you for joining again. Those who have joined, joined us online, thank you for joining. God bless you all. Have a blessed week. See you next week again. Thank you.